I will now do my review. 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 The Stepford Wives is a psychological thriller from 1975 based on the novel by Ira Levin, who's penned numerous novels that have been made into successful films such as Rosemary's Baby. It was directed by Brian Forbes and stars someone you may recognize from The Graduate, Catherine Ross, who turns in a wonderful lead performance as Joanna Eberhardt. Joanna Eberhardt and her family moved from New York to Connecticut to a small reclusive town that seems squeaky, clean, perfect on the surface level, but as you'll soon find out, things don't exactly go as planned. And so Joanna grows more and more suspicious of the intellectually vacant housewives that she's surrounded with, and the result is a lament on conformity, the role of housewives at that time, and the setting in Connecticut is sufficiently creepy and stuffy. I mean. Just for example, take a look at this charter from the town of Hartford. No animal or vehicles allowed to remain backed up to the curb, except during unloading, but doesn't apply to express wagons or licensed tax. Woo! That was a long way around to that joke. I think it's a really interesting idea having a thriller take place in broad daylight. That is, of course, except for the scene where the cop stops Joanna and goes, You see that foreboding castle off in the distance? Well, don't go near there, because we're going to need you to run there during the climax when there's a giant rainstorm. You know, I feel that a lot of remakes of 70s horror thriller movies seem to just bypass the social context or underlying commentary and just go straight for whatever the most sensational part about the movie was and then just amp up that, because that's what most people remember about it. I mean, take, for example, The Crazies, which I just did. Based on the trailer, it made it look like it was just focused on the action zombie outbreak stuff whereas the original had it had those scenes of confrontation but there is just a lot more weight carried underneath it and i'm not sure what to say about this film and the remake i know that the remake is pretty dreadful and tone deaf and makes it way more comical and lighthearted, which i don't think this movie deserves but at the same time i feel like the context and the commentary might be the best thing that's going for this movie. This movie is just under two hours. It just feels way too long and slow. You could have lost at least 15-20 minutes. The pacing has some issues. There's some awkward editing. There's some pretty awkward shot composition. And the whole act structure is in a dire need of some tightening. I mean, you know pretty much what's going to happen it's just a matter of how it's going to unfold and just to be clear i don't think slow pacing is bad in fact i really like it a lot of the time but in a thriller situation like this you always have to stay one step ahead of the audience at least there's just too many scenes of joanna and her husband not seeing eye to eye joanna and her friend saying there's something really strange going on i don't like it and leading up to the ending there's a vague explanation as to what's actually happening to all these wives and what's making them change and what they actually become which frustratingly is kind of just laid out at the end that said there are a couple of unforgettably awesome moments in this movie that are at the same time horrifying and hilarious such as about 45 minutes in when we start to see one of the housewives basically short circuit and she keeps going I'll, I'll just, just die, die if, if I don't, don't get, get this, this recipe. recipe. It more has creepy moments than being a complete creepy work of art. It's got the right idea, it's just a little muffled in the execution. So a minor recommendation for me, it would have been interesting to see one of the original choices for director Brian De Palma's version, but he had to go and make Obsession instead, and so Brian Forbes made it. As long as there's a Brian behind the camera. You know, this might be one of those movies that's a little bit more interesting to talk about and discuss than it is to actually sit and watch the whole thing. At the same time, writer William Goldman attests that the script kept getting changed and there was definitely some creative differences between he and Forbes. I would recommend this to anyone who enjoyed the movie Get Out because this was actually, along with Rosemary's Baby, a direct influence on Get Out. And if you like kind of conspiratorial thrillers, Invasion of the Body Snatchers, can't go wrong with that. Or one of my personal favorites, The Conversation. Definitely a depressing movie, as are a lot of the movies I do on this channel. But at the same time, you know, movies like this help us reflect on our own shortcomings and blah, 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 stay sexy.